Ready for the first run, each man brings his own jewellery, combs and cutters for the handpiece. The rest of the machinery belongs to the owner of the ship. They wear flannel shirts to absorb the sweat and special boots without nails because soon the board will be greasy and a slip with a racing handpiece could mean a wicked gash. Some of the boys make their own moccasins, as they call them, out of sacking. and Steve are both out to be ringer of the ship, the man with the best daily tally. The wool rollers can take it easy for a little longer as they wait for their first fleece. In this game, more haste means less speed and damage sheep as well. It looks effortless, but after a day of bent backs and concentration on the clean, long swing of that strong right arm, they're mighty glad to fall into bed. It's Purse who gets the first wool away, but that's only one sheep of the many that he and Steve will share today. The boys and rollers can't smoke now. If the board isn't kept clear, there'll be roars from the shearers. So the police has come over the rolling tables at a rate that keeps the rollers hard at work tearing off the dirty edges. The aristocrat of the shearing shed is the wool classer, a highly paid expert who sorts for length of staple, texture and strength. He's a key man in maintaining the world reputation of fine Australian wool. The presser has one of the toughest jobs in the shed. He gets paid according to the weight of wool he presses. Over it comes. Now he has to squeeze the contents of the top and bottom boxes together into the bale. and there it is 350 pounds of the world's best wool 